Hi, welcome to the Lisa Goodman Show. And today I have a very special guest with me, Jason Robel. He is really one of the first people in the, I think, wellness space. And he's also a master chef, but he uses superfoods and he's vegan and he's really has a way of putting these foods together so they look gorgeous and they taste delicious. This guy has been doing this for so long. I mean, there's so much that he does. He has a YouTube show that you absolutely have to watch because it's hysterical. That's your comedian. I think he's a comedian. It's a, yeah. And then you has, he has a show, How to Live to 100. He had a book that came out last year called Eternity. His whole goal is about getting you guys to live your best life and the longest life you can. Did I sum it up pretty that's well? That's a fantastic <laughs> intro. Yeah, in a nutshell, in, in a macadamia nutshell. <laughs> that's a tasty morsel. It's so good to see you, Alyssa. It, it's so good to have <laughs> you. Really, I mean, every I don't get to see you that often, right. but when I do see you and I pop up on YouTube and watch you, you really do make my day. Oh, like you're because so sweet. you're like the way you present things and how funny you are and you make you make light of life. <laughs> like I, I just to. am curious how the hell how do you do that? How do you do that day in and day out? Like well, I mean, first of all, it, the fact that I've brightened your day and, and, and can do that whenever you tune in, I appreciate it. that. makes my heart feel good. And, and I always love connecting with you. When we do run into each other, right. it's always like, oh, yeah, you're one of the tribe. Like, there's a kinship because <laughs> you're so full of life and love and laughter. Um, Thank you. For me, you know, I, I think when I started my journey, uh, especially focusing on this as a career, I realized that a lot of this information was so dry. It was so just like... And then you're going to get the phytonutrients <laughs> from the chemicals when you break it down. And when you break the cell wall, it, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is dreadful. So why See don't we just mean? make this fun? Like, God right. almighty. Right. It's, it's, and there's certain vitamins you need. And there's certain need, vitamins yeah. you need. And if you don't get enough B12, you'll have neurological. Oh, my God. Who wants to hear about this? So I just thought, how can I take my, my previous life, which was acting and comedy and performing, and somehow meld this with the wellness and the nutrition and the food and make it fun and have people laugh. Because mm -hmm. we know psychologically when people are laughing, yes. they're more open to receiving and retaining information, mm -hmm. right? Their, their, their fields are down, their shields are down. So my whole right. thing was if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this different than anybody else is doing it. And I wanna somehow merge the culinary with the comedy and make this a, a, just a rockin' good time. I mean, did you, were you always in this health arena? I mean, you were doing the acting, the comedy, did you yeah. get sick? Did, was there any reason why you went over into the healthy arena or just? There's a few reasons. <laughs> so so bef way before this transitioned into a career, way before I went to culinary school, uh, it was really out of my family's health issues. Um, when I was 18 years old, my grandfather passed from cancer and, uh. and it was a really interesting seed that got planted. Because at 18, I mean, growing up in Detroit, Midwestern kid, okay. you know, I'm eating everything imaginable, right. you know, flaming hot Cheetos, giant pizzas <laughs> from Domino's, you know, tons of Coke and Red Bull. I right. mean, I was right. the typical American teenage boy. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I'm going to live forever. What do I care at 18 years old? Exactly. But when my grandpa passed, it, it really planted the seed of looking at my entire family's health and then eventually my own. And I thought, that's not the road I want to head down. Right. That's not the road I want to head down. So over the course of three years, I transitioned from like a standard American, like I was a junk foodarian. I was like the more processed <laughs> junk foodarian. Oh, absolutely. I've never like, heard that term. Is that such a term? It's it is now okay, because good. it's beyond standard yeah. American. It's right. like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out of my way mm -hmm. to just punish my body <laughs> with the worst food because it's like oh, I can take it. Yeah. So I went from junk food Italian to at age 21 standing in my mom's kitchen. And I remember it was this moment like, Mom, I have to tell you something. And she's like, I think he's going to come out to me. Like, yeah. what's going to happen right now? Like, the look on her face is like, what are you going to tell me? Right. I said, I think I'm vegan now. And she looked at me. She's like, OK, I just want to make sure you do it the healthy way. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up on 20 years that I've been eating plant based and being vegan now. Like, are two you decades. strictly vegan? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Since okay. 1998. OK. So it's been something. And did you that, do it the right way from the beginning? Did she help you, or did you just learn yourself? How did you? Because that well, is a big issue these days. It like. is a big issue, and and the whole thing was making sure that I got enough nutrients. I did it in a balanced way. So it was partially taking a lot of those old classic family recipes. I grew up in a in a Puerto Rican, Spanish, and Polish family. So wow. a lot of dough and meat. <laughs> yeah, a lot of dough and meat. Quite so a combo. It, yeah, it was like. <laughs> It was like you had do, to have personality in that house. Yeah, it was like oh, plantains and pierogies. Right. Like, what do I do with this? Yeah. So part of it was was relearning how to make food mm -hmm. and make it plant based, 
but then making sure I get the B12 and the D3 and the omega-3s and do it in a healthy way. So it was a massive learning curve. And at that yeah. time, I mean, the internet was out, what, three years? There yeah. wasn't the glut of information and research we have now. So learning curve was steep, but I stuck with it because I felt good. Mm -hmm. And two decades later, I still feel great. Right. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that is really commendable at that early age to have that foresight, really, or the thinking of this is what I want to do and I want to do it the right way. Yeah. Instead of just doing the old, I was vegan when I was diagnosed with cancer, but I did carbs and soy and overdid all the stuff that right. really wasn't that great for me. Right. I wasn't. Yeah. So what now, <laughs> now with your career yeah. where it's gone, are you still acting and doing the like comedy stuff? I'm doing stand up. Okay, yeah. you are so, doing, okay. so, uh, so I, I resurrected the comedy thing last year. I've been gigging around LA. I had a gig like uh, two weeks ago at, um, at the comedy store, main oh, stage at the yeah. comedy store, which was great. Yeah. Although it was during the world series, which was tough, right? Wow. So it was like, there the wasn't that many people. Yeah. There, oh. there wasn't that many people in the crowd. And when you're out there and you're like, <laughs> everybody's watching the world series, damn it. What do I do? And you're like, well, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing even harder. So right. to me, uh, it's a great outlet because I can talk about things other than food and nutrition. Mm -hmm. I mean, most people, all they want to do is like, hey, let's talk about, you know, food all right. day long, which right. is great. But comedy to me is an outlet where I can let out, you know, my weirder sides, <laughs> my not so PC yeah. sides, the weirdness that goes on up here. So that's been great yeah. to get back into that. And it's, uh, I've been getting, you know, booked around the uh, town and it's been awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about that weird side. <laughs> I want to know a little more about that. Okay. I, you know, <laughs> how does that, you know, filter into this whole like food and nutrition and plant-based lifestyle? Yeah. How do you, you know, what do you do with all that? Okay. So <laughs> I, I, I think for me, if I think about my natural personality, mm -hmm. I've always been extremely rebellious. And not, not rebellious just for rebellion's sake, but re yeah. rebellion with an intention. Okay. And it was, even, even as a young child, I, I always wanted to think about how to do things differently. And we always hear, like, think outside the box. It, it, it's not as simple as that. I, I, and part of the reason I started eating this way was an extension of, as a kid, I would look at what is everyone else doing, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of what are they into? What are they studying? What are they, how are they eating? And it was like, okay, is it working for them? No. Okay, then what can I do that's completely different, way outside the norm? And so with the way that I eat, with the way that I kind of think, with my political views, with, you know, how I think about relationships, it, it's kind of this thread through of how can I think about things differently, unconventionally, and live my own best life, even if it flies in the face of what I've been raised, even if it flies in the face of what society tells us we should do. So I've always just had that inner rebelliousness, mm -hmm. but doing it intentionally of, I wanna live my best life, even if nobody understands, even right. if people don't get why I do what I do. Right, right. So we'll have to come back and ha hear more details. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Definitely boy. gotta get the details of this rebelliousness and how it fits in. I need more. I definitely need more from okay. Jason. <laughs> we'll be back in a few minutes, you guys. I can't tell you how excited I am about the Alyssa Goodman Show. I've partnered with the, the, ah, ready? Not ready. I focus with, I focus, I have focus with Focus TV. My brain is like going whoop, whoop. I'm sorry. Like, why is this so hard? Hey, all you need is a private chef and some Botox and a stylist and you're good to go. <laughs> So back with Jason Robel, and um, we're going to go dive deep into a little bit more about his rebelliousness, um, because I always was very much a rebellious teenager and adult, but I kind of had like a little bit more like handcuffs on growing up. Yeah. Um, and I still try to like kind of get outside the box myself, think outside the box, but it's hard because I'm so conditioned. But what are, you know? What are you doing in terms of what are you exploring right now? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, uh, other than obviously, constantly experimenting with my health. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's this thing of I, I'm 
I'm a constant experiment with trying new foods, trying new supplements, seeing what feels good in my body. That's one thing that's ongoing, right, is, is the physical experimentation. Is there but, anything in this particular moment that is really like highlighted in those areas? Yeah, Food, I mean, I, supplements. I've, I've been really just trying to uh, optimize my hormone levels okay. because I just turned 40. Yeah. And so there's an interesting transition as a man mm -hmm. that I'm experiencing, which is my testosterone's going down. Mm -hmm. And that means, you know, maybe a little less focus and, and kind of that, that primal, you know, caveman libido, I'm going to take over the village and right. impregnate everybody feeling. Right. For lack of a better term. <laughs> it's just that primal caveman energy, you yeah. know, that, that, that mm -hmm. drive that in my 20s and 30s was kind of, a no-brainer. I didn't yeah. even focus on it. But in researching my book and doing the TV show, you know, I really got into hormone health and how do we optimize, you know, our feelings of libido? How do we optimize our energy? How do we, you know, really crush it in the gym and get a good workout yeah. in? So the thing I've been really focusing on is things like intermittent fasting okay. and really increasing the HGH, the mm -hmm. human growth hormone in my body as I'm aging. Um, really looking so at... So you were feeling like that really attaches to the hormones in terms of helping... I, I think H... Yeah, I mean, yeah. HGH, we look at, you know, youthful skin and vibrance and that libido and mm -hmm. that, 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 that verve, that energy that we have. So focusing really on the HGH, the testosterone boosting. I've been taking um, a lot of anabolic foods, two anabolic minerals that I've been concentrating on mm -hmm. are magnesium and zinc. So I don't think a lot of people know about what anabolic means. Yeah, anabolic is really um, something that, that aids in muscle building, kind yeah. of this visceral hormonal response where we build lean muscle mass. Right. Uh, again, in the 20s and 30s, we have a lot of kind of this anabolic response in the body. Um, but I've just been eating a lot more protein, a lot more fat, okay. um, magnesium, zinc. And as a uh, vegan, yeah. what kind of proteins? Oh my God, uh, is so many things. Uh, black beans, garbanzo beans, lentils, legumes, tempeh. Uh, I do like fermented soy yeah, products, so which I. feel good in my body. Yeah. Um, broccoli and cauliflower, depending on the varietal, can be up to 40% protein. Right. Dark leafy greens have protein in them, chia seeds, hemp seeds, right. okay. uh, flax seeds. I mean, it's kind of this myth of- So you're upping those, like the protein with all the vegan options. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Yeah, and so I've just been really adjusting as I go because you know, we know on a cellular level that every seven years we are completely different on a cellular level. Yeah. Our cells turn over. So right. I'm never really fixated on one thing. So that's one thing I'm always experimenting with. But even in terms of, you know, meditation and mindfulness, I've been really getting into that a lot more the past few years of really getting my mind right and opening my heart and dealing with any childhood trauma that might be lingering. And as a result of that, I'm treating my relationships differently too, my intimate relationships. So um, one thing that I'm really exploring is whether, you know, traditional monogamy really works. Mm -hmm. Because in the course of my relationships, mm. it hasn't really worked out <laughs> so well, if I'm being honest about it. I um, love this. And, and you know, it, it's asking what is the nature of love? Yeah. You know, what does unconditional mm -hmm. love really mean? Can we have a life partner, but also maybe be open to exploring other people? What is the nature of commitment? What ultimately do we want? And can we have a more open, loving dialogue with the people we love in our lives? Because I know in my you know, family history and I think society, there's been this tendency to like, you know, be kind of clandestine about it. Like, totally. let's sweep it under the rug. Let's not really discuss the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. So I'm really exploring what does open, loving communication mean? How do I want to conduct myself in a relationship? And again, think outside of the box and go against society. And what really works for me? Right. What really works for me and my partner? And yeah. how is all of that working for you? It's crazy and it's scary, honestly, <laughs> yeah, be it is. because because it's you know because you are you're you know getting a little bit outside your comfort zone. I think you're yeah. pretty. I think you're pretty comfortable with this stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> totally, but you know you're just going that next to the next level. Yeah, it sounds like you're not really okay with the status quo. Or being I, I'm, anything. I'm not. I'm not. And 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 it's. Again, it's not rebelliousness for the sake yeah. of rebelling. It's, it's does this work? Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, the way they eat, the way they conduct themselves in the relationships, it's not really working. Right. And so the question is, okay, what can we explore with courage, with openness, with a sense of joyful experimentation, something that might work better right. instead of making it so heavy and scary and weird? But the interesting thing is since I've gone down this road of maybe conducting myself in, in relationships in a new way, I've been meeting a lot of couples and people that 
they've been in these non-traditional, non-heteronormative, non-monogamous relationships, right. and it's working, and they yeah. have children, and they've been partnered for years. Mm -hmm. So those kind of people have just been kind of floating into my sphere, and I'm right. learning from them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just I'm just constantly asking That's... myself, Alyssa, like what works for me? Yeah. And uh, and I've been you know dating, and I'm very upfront with people, you right. know, the women that I date. It's yeah. like, hey, I'm exploring something really non-traditional and a little bit strange, and if you're cool with that, like. Let's dance. Let's see where this goes. And how are most of these women? Are they cool with it? Are they? It's a mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit kind of like with the vegan thing. They're like, yeah. They're like, mm, well, if you make food for me, I'm cool with it. It's like, oh, I got it. I got it. as long as I'm doing the one make right. cool. I get it. Exactly. Um, it's it's I a mixed bag. Right. I mean, it just depends. I think living in LA naturally we find more open-minded people here, more True. creative people, alternative people, people into different things. So. I think it's important to be upfront with what's important yeah. to us when we meet someone new and like, hey, here are the cards on the table. This is what I'm into. This is what I'm focused on. Does that jive? Right. Is that cool with you? Um, like authentic and just totally authentic and very honest. Yeah, I think that's important so, no matter what kind of lifestyle yeah, we have is, right. hey, this is what's important to me. This is what's in my heart. Um, most most of the time it's been a positive response to it. Wow. It's curiosity I love too. It. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. I mean, how does this play a role in your whole, you know, plant-based vegan world, your healthy eating? Do you think this whole, what you're doing and exploring mm -hmm. these other options is just making you healthier, stronger, more resilient? I think it to is. To live to 100? I think it <laughs> is because, you know, this idea of longevity and living joyfully and living yeah. vibrantly isn't just about this, oh, what right. we put in our, we're putting our mouth. Yeah. That'd go a lot of different directions, <laughs> so I just said. It's not true. just about right, this. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's about... It's, it's R-rated, not X-rated. All right, exactly. We can push the envelope <laughs> here on the show. Uh, I think, you know, part of that, that joyfulness and that vibrance is living a life of authenticity. Yeah. Right? Not mm -hmm. living a life where we're trying to please other people, not trying to be something other than what we are. So for me, this experimentation in, in lifestyle and relationship and food is all about how can I, how can I be most true to me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. How, and I know that when I'm true to myself and I'm showing up in life authentically, radically honest about who I am and what I believe in, what, what means, you know, what has meaning to me, yeah. um, I show up better in my relationships because mm -hmm. people can trust me. I trust myself. Exactly. And they know exactly what they're getting. There's nothing right. being hidden. There's no hidden agenda. Right. So I think the more authentic we can be with how we live our lives, we're naturally going to want to live longer. Because Absolutely. because there's nothing being constricted, there's nothing being hidden, there's nothing being subverted. It's we're just showing up. It's like I am who I am. I'm either right. your flavor of ice cream or, or I'm, I'm not. not. I'm so in chocolate chip, baby. It. Okay. <laughs> well, the other night I have to say I was at Salt and Straw, which I have actually never been into because I'm not an ice cream girl. On Larchmont. I know. Is there one on Larchmont? Yeah. The, Different one. It, this is Venice. Oh, got it. So okay. they have another. Okay. So I had the like, um, what was it? Um, sweet potato, like mashed with m maple pecan oh ice cream. God. Oh, oh my God. God. It was like <sighs> orgasmic. It was so good. <laughs> I've had breakfast, so everyone. I think, so. I think you could maybe be one of those flavors. <laughs> like, I, I you know, the that. chocolate chip seems are really kind of not up your style. It's a little boring <laughs> for you. Uh, that's, yeah, maybe something a little funkier. Right. A little funkier. So what does the future hold for you? I mean, I, I know you've got a lot going on, yeah. but are there things that you want to do with all of this? that you're not doing yet? Yeah, so a couple things that are kind of, well, three things that are going on. So uh, I've been doing a lot of coaching recently and that's been really exciting to really work one-on-one -on -one with people. So I really have two tracks that I coach people with. One is really optimizing their nutrition and their okay. health and their vibrance through a plant-based lifestyle with meditation, with mindfulness, working on basically just awesome. optimizing their health on all levels. Okay. The other thing is helping wellpreneurs, those are entrepreneurs in the wellness field, launch their brands, monetize their brands, and get their message out into the world. So okay. that's really the two types of coaching I do. That's been wow. going really well. That's been fun. I bet. Um, the other thing too is um, I'm really getting more into the comedy and the music. And that's okay. the things that I was doing really before I started doing the chefing and the right. nutrition. And like I said, getting out there doing the stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing music again. I have a show booked at the Sycamore Tavern for music on February 7th. Wednesday, February 7th. Wow. So what kind of music? What do you do? Um, I... Like acoustic singer, songwriter, okay. soulful stuff. Jeez. Um, I mean, I, I grew what up. What don't you do? Uh, <laughs> I'm not a very good artist. If you ask me to <laughs> like, paint okay, something, okay. I'm pretty bad. Okay. So.
<laughs> don't ask okay. me to do that. <laughs> um, but uh, in terms of the food, I actually yeah. started writing my second TV series. Okay. So I've got a second TV series in the works. Uh, I'll give you a little hint of a yes. preview. It's kind of like Pee Wee's Playhouse meets Bill Nye the Science <laughs> Guy meets the Muppets. Oh my goodness. Oh God. That's all I can, can say. Can you put those together and figure out what that's all about? Yeah, oh. I'm just going to say it's a little hint. <laughs> but so it's going to be way weirder than the first TV okay. series and kind of like welcome to Jason's mind. Yeah. Hello, it's a strange place. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, so working that on that, so been writing cool. the treatments for that. So there's yeah. a lot of irons in the fire for 2018 wow. and beyond. Yeah. Wow. I am like, I mean, just spending this little bit of time with you, I'm so honored to know you, you and Alyssa. to hear, <laughs> you know, you really do light up a room and you really, I love the whole idea that you're exploring all these different avenues and just really being authentic with yourself because I think that's what my show is about. I want to bring people on that really are game changers in the wellness arena that are really authentic mm -hmm. and really are honest about their struggle, their journey and what they want to do with it. So. Um, you're really amazing. Thank you so much. So if you had to sum up your mission in one word. Wow, one word. Freedom. Nice. Yeah. Nice. No one said that. No. That's beautiful. I mean, we all could use that sense of freedom, yeah, right? And that, that's just what you're doing with like being authentic and exploring all your different avenues. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Freedom's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for thank being you, on the show. Always good to see you. Good to so see good you to too. see you. Do more of this, please. I, I will. Yeah. <laughs>